Hello, everyone. Finally identifying the enigmatic Sith Lord. The Acolyte Episode 5 Night leaves some issues unanswered and creates some new ones. Similar to how Palpatine served as a front for Darth Sidious in the prequel trilogy, Kimir turns out to have been a Sith Lord's persona in the classic Star Wars canon. This reveal highlights how much the public still doesn't know, even yet it provides new knowledge and addresses one of the most important mysteries regarding the Sith Lord. It raises more questions that need to be answered in the upcoming episodes and could have implications for other storylines. The Acolyte Episode 5 not only raises some questions that were before unconsidered, but also intensifies the obvious ones. A few newly revealed information present intriguing possibilities that might greatly enhance the story's intrigue and steer the season in an unanticipated path. These questions in particular need to be answered now that the Sith Lord has been revealed, because they have the best chance of providing a satisfying conclusion to the Acolyte Season 1. The Acolyte suggests that the Sith Lord and Master Saul may have met prior to the beginning of the series, even though it has previously been proven that they are acquainted. This would imply that the Sith Lord targeted Saul out of resentment rather than just due of his relationship with me. But the Sith Lord seems to hide his feelings of rage and loathing for Saul better than me does. Or at least he doesn't seem to harbor them as much. Saul claims that he has a connection to the Sith Lord that may extend beyond simply recalling the person who injected me with the poison. The Sith Lord's presence the night Osha and Mi's family were murdered offers one answer. The show has stated that Mi started the fire while implying that the Jedi were really to blame. However, what if the Sith Lord was to blame? The Sith Lord might have prevented me from dying by blaming the Jedi for it, much like he did for Osha, in order to turn her into an acolyte. With only a few episodes remaining, it makes more narrative sense to tie the various individuals together, even though Saul and the Sith Lord's past may not be at all connected. As a former pupil, the Sith Lord might potentially have ties to Osha and Mi's Witch Coven. Osha observes that her mother could do the same when Yord Fander explains to her how the Sith Lord enters a person's thoughts. Given that Sith Lords and other Dark Side users have been shown in earlier Star Wars films and television series to enter people's minds, this comparison might be quite straightforward. But it might also be a purposeful hint at the Sith Lord's past with the Witch Coven, which would explain some of his more potent Force powers and why he is so strong overall. The Coven of Osha and Mi is reticent and wary of strangers. Yet, disclosing their previous relationship with the Sith Lord may help to explain this. Maybe they accepted to train him because he was eager to pick up their ways and shared their contempt for the Jedi. But they soon saw what he planned to do with their information. It would give the Sith Lord a reason to slaughter the Witch Coven and explain why he sought out Mi to be his disciple. He might have even coerced me into starting the fire by using his newly acquired power to enter people's minds. Even though Hasbro's Black Series refers to him as the Stanger, and he goes by the moniker Kimir, the Sith Lord of the Acolyte says he has no name. This is highly odd because Sith usually take great satisfaction in renaming their characters to better represent their newfound dark side selves. Anakin Skywalker became Darth Vader, Palpatine became Darth Sidious, and Count Dooku became Darth Tyranus. Why doesn't this Sith Lord renounce his former self and adopt the name Kylo Ren, just as Ben Solo, who accepted the dark side but wasn't a Sith Lord? Like Han Solo at the beginning of Solo, a Star Wars story or Rey in the Star Wars sequel trilogy, he might have a secret Sith title but no family name. If he is an apprentice of the Sith, his teacher might have decided to withhold a proper name from him until he has shown himself worthy. An even more peculiar explanation would be the Sith Lord's deliberate rejection of all titles and names in order to completely shed his humanity and become into a vessel for the dark side. Still, there might be a more straightforward explanation for his lack of a Sith name. It is important to remember that Kimir can just be a dark side user and not a legitimate Sith Lord. In response to Sol's question, Kimir responds, The Jedi like you might call me, Sith. This is just an admission that the Jedi would classify him as a Sith, not an affirmation that he is one. It also implies that Kimir identified as a Sith, even though he may not be descended from Darth Bane's Sith line. Naturally, in the Star Wars, Clone Wars 2D microseries, Count Dooku explained to Asajj Ventress why not everyone is eligible to call oneself a Sith. By this reasoning, a character is not always a Sith just because they dress and battle like one. 
Despite behaving like Sith Lords and having a covert connection to Palpatine and the Sith Eternal, Supreme Leaders Snoke and Kylo Ren were not officially recognized as such in the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Though his origins are not entirely known, there is some evidence that suggests the Acolyte Sith Lord might be a Knight of Ren. His look is undoubtedly in keeping with the Knights of Ren, and the episode included a musical cue that sounds like Kylo Ren's theme. There is still time for the show to address at least some of these concerns, because the Jedi have not seen the last of this Sith Lord in the Acolyte.